Good morning. Going to be going through a video with you. Um, I was going to um, just do the video done um, provided by Mr. John McLean, but um, this this one is a little little bit more in depth, if you will. Um, now the video that we're going to be looking at has subtitles in English. But um, so you're going to have to read uh, what these guys are saying. But what this is going to demonstrate and show you is going to speak volumes in and of itself. But before we, we before we begin, please get your authorized version of the scriptures, the King James version, commonly called. Um, if you if you've come to this channel, if you are seeing this channel, um, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, has um, called me to has called me to preach and to teach the Scriptures. I say that reluctantly, but this is what He has done. He has called me to do this. So if you are seeing this video, understand that we are going to be going through, after we watch this, we are going to be going through the scriptures. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word, the authorized version, is truth. Okay? Bibles, such as the NIV, ESV, so on and so forth, they are Bibles. They are not scripture. Okay? So if you see this video, if you come here, okay, you need to understand that. We are going to be going through scripture about what we are about to see. And also before we see this, keep in mind about what is called predictive programming. Predictive programming is just that. Um, they will, in media, they will tell you things that are going to happen in the future. Why? Because the media is controlled by the Jesuit order. The media, especially today, media, news, movies, television, radio, stuff like that. They are controlled by the Jesuit order. Okay, The Jesuit order is modern Catholicism. Catholicism is what? Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Okay, Revelation chapter 17. Mystery Babylon is Satan's church. So Satan controls the media, controls television, controls the movies, and all this. Okay? So when it comes to keeping in mind predictive programming, what am I meaning? It used to be on YouTube that before the um, poison crown psychological operation instituted, created by the Jesuit order. Look up Poison Crown in Latin, you'll know what I'm talking about, okay? But before the Poison Crown psychological operation created by the Jesuits, on YouTube you could find some really good documentaries and such on, for example, a documentary on AIDS, which gave conclusive proof that AIDS is a man-made disease. Also, a really good documentary that used to be on YouTube um, about polio. <laughs> Very good. That that old uh, documentary that was on YouTube here. Um, you watch that. There you. There's no doubt. There's no doubt. Polio was a man-made disease as well. No doubt. But. Because of the Poison Crown psychological operation instituted and created and put in by the Jesuit order, YouTube have since purged all things uh, that can uh, remotely address the things that are happening today. Sad. You can find these uh, documentaries on other platforms. YouTube, unfortunately, you cannot. But predictive programming. During World War II, the Germans were experimenting to make a 
super soldier. Okay? And then you can look up into eugenics. Again, I don't know if that information is still readily available on YouTube, but you can look into what eugenics is and the thing of designer babies that parents can go to a laboratory and basically play God and pick what uh, hair color, eye color, and that kind of stuff that the children that they want to have will be. They play God. Okay? Here in America, there is a comic book character called Captain America. And you, the lost, you went rushing to the movie theaters to see the Marvel movies, didn't you? But see, Captain America is a super soldier who was given a serum to make him this super mighty, agile, strong, whatever, predictive programming. That is what the Germans in World War II were seeking to do, to make a breed of super humans. Okay? That's what they were doing. And hence, the Captain America comic book character uh, was based off of that predictive programming. In this video we are about to watch, this deals with children birthed from a, the time period from when the steel, from the steel of the Jesuit Ponyard, okay, you can't figure it out what I'm talking about, huh? From the time that the steel of the Jesuit Ponyard came about until present, there is a generation of children being born as a result by both or one of the parents having the steel of the Jesuit poniard. And the steel of the Jesuit poniard within it has what is called the VMAT2 inhibitors, also known as the Funvax, created by Bill Gates. Well, they attribute it to him. Uh, only the Jesuits can come up with such an evil device as such. There are many people out there who are about the Funvax videos like, oh, it's fake. That's not real. Oh, it's dubbed. Uh, no, dear friends. It's real. And that is part of the steel of the Jesuit poniard, which, as I understand it, affects the pineal gland which is the one that is attributed to where you start thinking about the Lord and stuff like that. You know, Hindus, you see the red dot on their foreheads? Okay, you've heard the thing, your third eye, they're referring to the pineal gland, I believe that's what it's called. The third eye right here in, uh, by your brain, whatnot. So when you see the, the Hindus with the red dot, that's what that sim symbolizes, the third eye. Okay? Are you with me so far? But the, the fact of creating super soldiers, which they were doing, experimenting in World War II. Any of you have links to help support and suggest with that, leave them or email them to me because if you link a link in, one of the, in my comment section, YouTube will take it away. And isn't it interesting that YouTube is still, to this day, uh, after four days... Some videos will lose 100 to 150 views. They don't do it all the time, but it generally works in a four-day cycle. A video will be up for four days, and then all of a sudden it'll drop 100 to 150 views. <laughs> but think about the super soldiers and designer babies. Brethren, God's judgment is coming to this world. And with what you see, or what you are about to see, you can make all the excuses you want to make. You can be passive as all you want to be. This kind of stuff is going to hasten God's judgment. God help us. 
But before we get, begin this, turn in your authorized version to Job chapter 30. A couple of verses here to start. Verses 1 under verse 3. Uh, the authorized version, the King James Version. These are the scriptures. This is the perfect, inerrant, given by inspiration word of God. Okay? Job chapter 30. Job, by the way, for those of you who do not know, Job is right before the book of Psalms. Take your scriptures, open it somewhere in the middle. Uh, you might come to the Proverbs or the Psalms. Go, turn your pages that way, to your right. Go backwards to the book of Job, okay? Job chapter 30, verses 1 on to verse 3. Follow me along. I expect you to. And I'm going to speak to you as if you are. But now they that are younger than I have me in derision, whose fathers I would not have disdained with whose fathers I would have disdained, beg your pardon, to have set with the dogs of my flock. The fathers who raised these children. Job wouldn't have put them with the dogs of his flock. That tells you something. Yea, whereto might the strength of their hands profit me, in whom old age was perished? For want and famine, they are solitary, fleeing into the wilderness, in former time desolate and waste. You know, there's the term baby boomers, a generation. Um, I think that was the post-World War II uh, era, I think. Not, not too sure. But this generation, from the institution of the steel of the Jesuit poniard up till right now, that this generation of children being born with that poison within them, with the uh, VMAC2 inhibitors and the mRNA, messenger NRA or whatever that, uh, uh, mRNA, messenger RNA, okay? And all those toxins within it. If this doesn't light a fire underneath your buttocks, you better check your pulse, boy. Now, like I said, this is all in subtitles, so. Como lo había prometido, voy a poner el vídeo de este, estos nacimientos de hijos de padres que fueron vacunados a principios de enero, finales de diciembre, antes de la concepción en embarazo y de, lógicamente, del parto. Entonces, lo que estamos viendo es que los niños tienen una especie de... de efecto sindrómico tienen una serie de rasgos característicos como el color negruzco de los ojos que incluso suelen ser claros cuando cuando nacen y después adquieren el color que vayan a tener y se forma la retina y el iris pero vamos a ver la imagen y ustedes juzgan en función de lo que estábamos viendo so as you just read I play this video back as many times as you can or if you want to I will try to put the link for this uh, particular video in the description box um, that might not work because uh, YouTube because it's from another platform YouTube might uh, zap it so um, uh, it might be provided in the comment section okay but nonetheless um, this individual is talking about there's differences in between these children that are being born from the steel of the Jesuit Punyard parents than what is done naturally. Okay, you caught that? Now, might have to uh, mute some of this because if we're going to hear the uh, things in the background, there are curse words and swearing, so so be prepared. Uh, I'll, I'll, mute, I'll mute it here really quick, so let's continue. Sorry for this offensive music. 
there. I've muted it. Look at that. Look at that child. Look at that child. That child is the after effect of parents, at least one of them, who has received the steel of the Jesuit Punyard. Look at that. Absolutely amazing. A nivel cromosómico. Y aparecen este tipo de síndromes. También tenemos algún artículo que habla precisamente de cómo afecta la motilidad del esperma a la espermatogénesis y cómo genera este óxido de grafeno genotoxicidad, es decir, alteración del propio ADN, especialmente en las células más sensibles, que son las células, como digo, germinales. Claro, a las embarazadas le dicen que la vacuna es segura, <risa> a pesar de que hay un 6.485% de abortos y de muertes de neonatos. Look at that child. Look at that child, people. Now these are, again, these ch children are upwards to only three months of age. Three months. Let's see. Be quiet. Pardon. Beg your pardon, brother. Um, for those of you who are parents, how unusual is it for a toddler that size to learn how to walk and to be quickly developed? Hmm. Hmm. These are poison crown babies. Born of parents who have received the steel of the Jesuit Punyard. Either one or both. At three months. See that? That child, unfortunately, looks like what uh, what uh, media wants you to believe an alien looks like. Is it possible, brethren, people, that the... Look at that. That's months. Like 90 days. Is it possible, brethren, people, that we are seeing what the Germans, the two weeks, two weeks old, are we seeing the fulfillment of what the Germans attempted to do to make super soldiers? Hmm? Remembering the predictive programming, look at that. The predictive programming through the media, okay, telling us about this. Three months old. That's, <laughs> parents, that is unusual, is it not? See, 
only the Jesuit order, only the Jesuit order could do such atrocities. Y cada verdad que no acompaña, verdad, es mm, de ser ciertas esas imágenes que las tendrán que coger ustedes como. Pero es cierto que cada vez no van llegando más. Es como si hubiera un, un envejecimiento prematuro. Y si las cualidades físicas que se tendrían que tener al, al año o al año y pico, pues las tienen ya con edades muy tempranas. ¿eh? Intentos de gatear con dos semanas, cosas que no son normales. Aparte de esos ojos negros, que no es precisamente la canción de Duncan Du. Hemos puesto al principio un vídeo un poco preocupante del tema de los, de los ojos negros, que le llaman ya en, en los nacimientos de niños en el 2021 tras la previa vacunación de los padres. Y lo que, lo que se observa, si hacemos, que de, todavía decimos que lo, lo cogemos un poquito con pinza, con alfileres, hasta esperar a tener más casos y tal, ver más... más. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Yo, lo... And, uh, absolutely, you do have to take it with a pinch of salt. Absolutely. But the can look this up. Um, Um, there, are, there are many sources of information on this that you can find, okay? But like you said, yes, you have to take it with a grain of salt. But, remember, remember, the Nazis were experimenting with this. This is what was the basis here in America of the Monarch program. You know, Monarch, MK, Ultra, Mind Control, and that kind of stuff. Okay, remember the predictive programming in movies and also of that uh, satanic comic book character, Captain America. Okay, creating a generation of super soldiers. Like, like, the, like the guy said, well, as you read, crawling in two weeks, walking, standing in three months, that's not normal. And the tie is for these people is to steal the Jesuit poniard. Only the Jesuits can come up with such horrific atrocities as this. Yes, take it with a pinch of salt, but people, people. A generation being born with all those qualities of the steel of the Jesuit Punyard, with the VMAT2 inhibitor, lo que se observa es como si hubiera un envejecimiento o un desarrollo prematuro. Los niños con tres meses andan, por ejemplo, cuando no es normal, ¿no? A partir de, yo creo que el el más cercano que yo he visto es con 9, 10 meses, una cosa así. Antes ah, de los 14 meses, más o menos, 12, 14 meses, tiene que haber, tiene que andar. Pero bueno, eso lo pueden hacer a partir de los 9 meses, 10 meses, ah, más o menos. Gatear con 2 semanas, eso por ejemplo, es, no es normal. Eso, no, no. O por ejemplo... Por ejemplo que... Avanzados, ¿eh? lo que ocurre es que la, es verdad que el, los ojos llaman mucho la atención, y todo lo que con re, corresponde a estos niños, hay que observarlos, a ver qué, qué niños son esos que están saliendo con lo de la vacuna. O sea, <risa> si es que si ten, tenemos que conseguir que esto se detenga antes. This should have been stopped earlier. Thank you, pardon, brethren. Beg your pardon, brethren, here now. Yes. And now with this, beg your pardon, people. All right. So there you go. There you go. Turn in your authorized version of the scriptures to Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 15. You might be saying, Brad, you're being, this is conspiracy theory. You're just being conspiratorial, yeah? Yeah? When are you going to wake up? Hmm? When the black pope, 
Who is the black pope, Arturo Sosa, who is the head of Roman Catholicism? Not Francis. Pope Francis is a Jesuit. Okay? And according to the Jesuits' own teaching, Francis is subservient unto the, uh, the superior, superior general of the Jesuit order. Who is the head of the Jesuit order? Arturo Sosa. He is the black pope. He is the one who is in control of all Roman Catholicism. Francis is subservient unto Sosa. Okay? Arturo Sosa is the most powerful, deadliest man on earth. And it is to add the whole world, all the nations go to Francis to bow before him. And the steel of the Jesuit poniard, which the Jesuit order created, through their front groups, what we just saw, generation born with that. Jeremiah chapter 15, verses 1 on to verse 9. Follow me along. Then said the Lord unto me, Though Moses and Samuel stood before me, yet my mind could not be toward this people. Cast them out of my sight, and let them go forth. Now put this into perspective, okay, about the Funvax, the VMAT2 inhibitors, okay? Put this into mind. People who have that, their minds are affected against God. And children being born into this world with that already made into their genes, into their DNA. And it shall come to pass, if they say unto thee, Whither shall we go forth? Then... Thou shalt tell them, Thus saith the Lord, Such as are for death to death, and such as are for the sword to the sword, and such as are for the famine to the famine, and such as are for the captivity to the captivity. Get the finality of that judgment right there. And I will appoint over them four kinds, saith the Lord, the sword to slay, and the dogs to tear, and the fowls of the heaven, and the beasts of the earth, to devour and destroy. And I will cause them to be removed into all kingdoms of the earth, because of Manasseh, the son of Hezekiah, king of Judah, for that which he did in Jerusalem. Think about Manasseh, too. you got to remember. Manasseh got saved, as you were. Okay? Manasseh got right with the Lord. I truly believe that King Manasseh is in heaven. But see, the evil that he wrought upon his people, the Jews, Israel, could not have been undone, even though he himself was right with the Lord and is in heaven as we speak. Okay, What he did unto the people could not have been reversed, except by God's judgment seat. Okay? For who shall have pity upon thee, O Jerusalem? Or who shall bemoan thee? Or who shall go aside to ask how thou doest? Verse 6. This is America. This is virtually every nation under heaven today. Especially Australia. Australia, people, is the archetype of what is coming globally. Thou hast forsaken me, saith the Lord. Thou art gone backward. Therefore will I stretch out my hand against thee and destroy thee. I am weary. I am weary with repenting. See, and these Christians tell you lost people, God loves you. God's love is unconditional. That's not true. You reject the gospel. You reject Jesus Christ one time. God's wrath is upon you. Now, upon rejecting the Lord, that doesn't mean that you can't be saved today in this dispensation. 
Okay? That that doesn't mean that. But see, you reject the Lord once, you're his enemy. You are a child of wrath. I've talked about that in many videos, okay? You're a child of wrath if you reject the gospel. You reject the Lord Jesus Christ. You reject God our Father for what he did for you on the cross. Especially when it's your fault. Yeah, it's my fault too. But see, I'm a saved sinner. You're not saved, you're a lost sinner. Okay? But see, God has patience with those that are his. God has long suffering for that, the world. And the Christians tell you that, you know, they'll go to verses like, if your brother uh, sin against you and come to you seven times a day and repents, forgive him. And that is true. Yes. But see, when you got a nation, when you got a people that are constantly rejecting God and testing his long suffering, and you, as the church of the living God, living in your sin that's causing you all kinds of health problems. And you're saved. You are. How long do you think his patience with you is going to uh, withhold? Or withstand, excuse me. Hmm? See, this is something that these wicked Christians want you to believe, people. That God's patience for his own will never dry or uh, wax thin or his long suffering will reach an end. Look at, look at verse 6. I am weary with repenting. See, you and I as a church of the living God, God's patience is for us. But see, those who are lost, God has long suffering suffereth long with them. Why? Because, see, when praying for the wicked, for the lost, that God's judgment be upon them, in that judgment, hopefully these lost people will come to brokenness, contrition, and the fear of the Lord, and call upon his name, and that he may save them. Okay? Okay? But when God's long-suffering has re reached an end. Verse 7. And I will fan them with a fan in the gates of the land. I will bereave them of children. I will destroy my people since they return not from their ways. Their widows are increased to me above the sand of the seas. I have brought the I have brought upon them I have brought upon them against the mother of the young men a spoiler at noonday. I have caused him to fall upon it suddenly and tears upon the city. She that hath borne seven languisheth. She hath given up the ghost. Her son has gone down while it was yet day. She hath been ashamed and confounded. And the residue of them will I deliver to the sword before their enemies, saith the Lord. And who is your enemy? Your enemy is Rome. Your enemy is the Jesuit and the Jesuit order. Your enemy is Satan and his church, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Rome is your enemy. Catholicism is your enemy. The Jesuits are your enemy, people. And remember, Catholics are Christians. Where are you? I'm not a Christian. I'm not a Christian. I'm of the church of the living God. Or the church of God. That's what we, the body of Christ, the church of the living God, call ourselves. Christian is pinned on us by the world. Oh, Brad, you're making a mountain out of a molehill. But really? 
Really? How many of you lost people want nothing to do with Christianity? Amen. Rightly so. Because what you see as is Christian. Huh? Huh? You lost people? You see the Joel Osteens, which, uh, I mean, anyone with half a brain can figure out that guy is a devil. Hmm? You see the Kenneth Copelands. Okay? The Joyce Myers. Joker, Joyce Meyer, okay? You see dogs like that, okay? And you, a lost person. <laughs> Christian, huh? You see Catholics, Catholicism, with all their pedophilia. Christian. Yeah, that's Christian. Yeah, that is. That ain't of the Church of the Living God. See, for that very reason is why the Jew will have nothing to do with what is Christian. They want to call themselves Messianic believers. But see, Messianic believer is not to be found in Scripture. Church of God, Church of the Living God is. And because of the Jesuit order, order what you saw, And you know what? In these times right now, brethren, okay, they, they came out, the governments came out with the UFO stuff, right? Trying to tell you that hey, life forms from other planets might come and do us harm. And now you have stuff like this. The things that you, some of you people will believe it is not too far of a stretch to believe that the research begun by the Nazis of creating the super soldiers is being played out right before our eyes with this generation of children being born as a result of the steal of the Jesuit Pundard. When the Black Pope said that we can't go back to the way it was before all of this, okay? The Black Pope, Arturo Sosa, said, uh, before, you know, we can't go back to the way things were before. When you have the most powerful, deadliest man on earth saying something like that, you need to <laughs> take notice. And now these children, who in and of themselves are innocent, In and of themselves, those children are innocent. But the parents who fell along with the psychological operation and the propaganda, Jeremiah 16, verses 1 on to verse 9. The word of the Lord came on to, also unto me, saying, Thou shalt not take thee a wife, neither shalt thou have sons or daughters in this place. Why? For thus saith the Lord concerning the sons and concerning the daughters that are born in this place, and concerning their mothers that bear them, and concerning their fathers that begat them in this land. They shall die of grievous deaths. They shall not be lamented, neither shall they be buried, but they shall be as dung upon the face of the earth. And they shall be consumed by the sword and by famine, and their carcasses shall be meat for the fowls of heaven and for the beasts of the earth. For thus saith the Lord, Enter not into the house of mourning, neither go to lament, nor bemoan them. For I have taken away my peace from this people, saith the Lord, even love and kindness and mercies. You lost people who hate God. You're breathing today, you're alive today. It's his kindness, it's his mercy. He has given you today a chance to repent of your self-righteousness and come to him 
broken of your self-righteousness. Sorry for your sins that you did to him. And in fear, call upon the name of the Lord. He has given you today. But what happens when, for I have taken away my peace from this people, saith the Lord, even loving kindness and mercies. See, we, the church of the living God, what's going to happen to us is we are going to be resurrected, caught up, redeemed before the time of Jacob's trouble. You hear Christians talk about the great tribulation. Uh, it's not called the great tribulation. The great tribulation doesn't appear in scripture. Okay, It's the time of Jacob's trouble or Daniel's 70th week. Beg your pardon. It's the time of Jacob's trouble. Why? Because it's for Israel. Jacob is Israel. Who are Israelites? Jews. Who are Jews? Primarily Hebrews. Did a whole two-part video on that. Okay? But see, we are going to be taken out before the seven-year time period of Jacob's trouble come. You can escape what's coming. See, you got to go to God on his terms, broken, contrite, and in fear of the Lord, call upon the name of the Lord. And if he save you, he will make you a new creature. Because, see, God's ultimate taking away of peace and mercy from this world will be when he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of, out of the way the body of Christ, the church of the living God. When we are taken out of the way, you're going to be left with the monsters that created that. The Jesuit order, Roman Catholicism. You better wake up now, boy. Time is running out. Life is too short to be distracted when we got this kind of stuff to deal with. You understand? Verse 6. Both the great and the small shall die in this land. They shall not be buried, neither shall men lament for them, nor cut themselves, nor make themselves bald for them. Neither shall men tear themselves for them in mourning to comfort them for the dead. Neither shall men give them the cup of consolation to drink for their father or for their mother. I personally think you can tie that into those who say uh, masses or have masses for the dead, praying for the dead, which comes uh, from the book of Second or First Maccabees in the Apocrypha, which is not inspired scripture, but the Catholic tells you it is, where Catholicism gets all its doctrine from uh, the Apocrypha, books that are not scripture. Thou shalt not also go into the house of feasting to sit with them, to eat and to drink. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Behold, I will cause to cease out of this place in your eyes and in your days the voice of mirth and the voice of gladness, the voice of the bridegroom and the voice of the bride. And remember though, in the days of Noah, before the flood came, which is a type of God's wrath. And the ark is a type of the church of the living God being uh, carried up, caught out, and caught up before. Okay? But think about it. During the days of Noah, they were eating and drinking and giving in marriage and being married. The days of Noah. Jeremiah 20. Verses 14 on to verse 18. With some of these kids, those children, who are walking at three months old, crawling at two weeks, that is very rare. That's not normal.
Jeremiah 20, verses 14 on to verse 18. Cursed be the day wherein I was born. Let not the day wherein my mother bare me be blessed. Cursed be the man who brought tidings to my father, saying, A man child is born unto thee, making him very glad. And let that man be as the cities which the Lord overthrew and repented not. And let him hear the cry in the morning and the shouting at noontide. You know, the Jesuits who instigated this, who created all this, their damnation is just. They're going to hell, and they deserve to go there. I don't want to see my greatest enemy go to hell. But see, God's righteous judgment is just, fair, and equal. Like I said, I don't want to see even my greatest enemy go to hell. But remember, people, remember, there are no innocent people in hell. And they are there because they deserve to be there. And they didn't come to the Lord on his terms. Interesting. Spiritual and temporal. They go up some other way. The people who have caused all this. I truly believe they're going to have a special place for them in hell where the Lord is going to turn the dial so maybe it'll burn just a little little bit more hotter. And God is right and just to send them there. Like I said, I don't want to see my greatest enemy go to hell. I don't. I don't. I really don't. Because the scripture is plain to what awaits those who go to hell. My mother is in hell. You have family members in hell. And those who are in hell, if they could tell us one thing, I bet you they would tell us not to come there. But see, God's judgment is just. His righteousness, His judgment they're just fair and equal. Those who created all this, they're going to go to where they deserve to go and they're going to get what's coming to them. And they deserve every bit of it. Because our God is just, righteous, pure. And he will in no way clear the guilty. Unless that guilty come to him on his terms. And is it any wonder why there are so many out there who want you to go up another way by just believing? Verse 17. Because he slew me not from the womb, or that my mother might have been my grave, or her womb to be always great with me. Wherefore came I forth out of the womb to see labor and sorrow, that my days should be consumed with shame? You know, um, a brother of mine brought up, you know, the possibility of having children. Brother, the fruit of the womb is God's reward. Amen. Children are a blessing, not a curse. But see, the children of today who are fornicating like jackrabbits out there. They have a child and with abortion, get rid of the child. Okay, get rid of the child. A child is not a curse but a blessing. Okay. But prayerfully consider having a child this close to being redeemed, resurrected, Whenever that may be, I personally don't think we have 10 years. When the Jesuit order are doing things like that, when children are being born like that, hmm. 
Jeremiah chapter 32, verses 25, uh, 26 on to verse 35. Jeremiah chapter 32, verses 26 on to verse 35. Then came the word of the Lord unto Jeremiah, saying, Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? Therefore thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will give this city into the hand of the Chaldeans, and into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and he shall take it. Now, Roman Catholicism is mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. But this world is going to be given into the hand of Satan uh, when we, the church of the living God, are caught up, okay? Satan right now is being allowed to do what he is doing as judgment upon this earth. But when we, Church of the Living God, look this up in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, in the scriptures, not in the Bible, okay? The verse that says, He who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. That's referring on to us, the Church of the Living God, because God is omnipresent. God ain't going anywhere. But his ambassadors, his body that speak on his behalf here on earth. Once we get out of here, Satan and his church is going to be having free reign. It's going to be a second dark ages. The new world order is a return to the dark ages. And in the dark ages, only the priest class had control of the Bibles. And God used, God used the protestant reformation to put the word of God into the common man's hand. Yes, he did. That cannot be denied. That cannot be denied. Even though all the reformers, as it were, were former Catholics. Virtually every single one of them. Okay? Virtually every single one of them. But see, a return to the Dark Ages is the New World Order. Like it says on our disgusting American $1 bill. What is it? Uh, order without God, I believe that is. On the $1 bill, you know, that has the eye of Horus and the symbol of Ra and the seal of Solomon, the Masonic star on it. A wicked devil once made a real good, honest point. A real evil, wicked devil from England once made a real good point, which I actually agree with. He said, I will never have a dollar bill in my possession. Hey there, devil, I got to hand it to you on that one. You're right. Because the American dollar, look at it. That's the eye of Horus. The eagle. That is the uh, symbol of Ra, the Egyptian sun god. The thing above the eagle on the dollar bill Draw the lines together. That's the seal of Solomon. The sign of the Masons. Which happens to be the incorrect flag for Israel today. The true flag of Israel is the, the flag with the lion on it. Symbolizing the lion of the tribe of Judah. Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Okay. Let's continue. And the Chaldeans that fight against the city shall come and set fire on the city and burn it with the houses upon whose roofs they have offered incense unto Baal and poured out drink offerings unto other gods to provoke me to anger. Doctrinally, dispensationally, this is a prophecy that came to pass when Nebuchadnezzar came and smoked Jerusalem, set it on fire. Yes, but to instruct us, you, in righteousness, when the church of the living God is taken out of here, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots, is going to come and uh, Revelation chapter 6, when our Lord opens the first seal, and that rider on the white horse, who will be that man of sin, the son of perdition, going forth with um, a crown and a bow that has no arrows, that's the son of perdition. Okay? Let's continue. For the children of Israel and the children of Judah have only done evil before me from their youth. 
For the children of Israel have only provoked me to anger with the work of their hands, saith the Lord God. The world today, you lost people, our nations, America especially, Australia, come on. The work of their hands is provoking the Lord to great anger. Those kids that we saw in that video, think the Lord is pleased with that? That's defying what God has done. Like you saw, um, a child crawling into it. Mothers who have more children, put in the comment section. When did your child start crawling? When did your child start walking? When did your child start teething? Verse 31. For this city hath been to me as a provocation of mine anger and of my fury from the day that they built it even unto this day, that I should remove it from before my face. So since the day of inception, basically he's saying, all you've done is taunted me and angered me by the works of your hands. God's grace is there, yes, but people... How much longer do we have until God's long suffering runs out? You of the church of the living God, how much how much more of his patience is he going to give you before he fulfills 1 Corinthians chapter 5? That he destroys you, that your spirit may be saved, that your spirit may be saved, excuse me, in the day of the Lord Jesus. Beg pardon. Because of all the evil of the children of Israel and of the children of Judah, which they have done to provoke me to anger, they, their kings, their princes, their priests, and their prophets, and the men of Judah, and the inhabitants of Jerusalem. And they have turned unto me the back. Look at America. Look at America. Look at Australia. Whatever nation you're in, look at your nation. Our nation is Christian. Yeah, yeah, sure, I'm sure it is. What is Christian today is that spirit of Antichrist. Oh, what? What? Look at the Christians. Look at what they're preaching to you people. The love of God, a sappy Love that doesn't judge. A sappy love that's okay with sin. A love that wants you to be like the world to win the world. No wonder you lost people. Want nothing to do with that. No wonder. Because most of you lost people know that... Wait, I mean... Your God killed people in the Old Testament and your God says unless you come to him on his terms you're going to go to hell. But yet you got these guys telling God loves you. Is it any wonder? God's judgment and wrath is coming people. What are you going to do about it? Verse 33, And they have turned unto me the back and not the face, though I taught them, rising up early and teaching them. Yet they have not hearkened to receive instruction. But they set their abominations in the house, which is called by my name to defile it. And they built the high places of Baal, which are in the valley of the son of Hinnom, to cause their sons and their daughters to pass through the fire unto Moloch which I commanded them not, neither came it into my mind that they should do this abomination to cause Judah to sin. Look at that verse. And they built the high places of Baal. Baal. Baalite. I.e. Satan. 
which are in the valley of the son of Hinnom, to cause their sons and their daughters to pass through the fire onto Moloch. Moloch, i.e. Satan. Many names for Satan. Which I commanded them not. Neither came it into my mind that they should do this abomination to cause Judah to sin. God doesn't want child sacrifice. Okay? Go to Leviticus. Leviticus. Go to the front of the scriptures. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus. Okay? To the front of the scriptures. Okay? First five books of Moses. The Torah. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Okay? Leviticus chapter 20. Whoa. Sorry about that, brethren. <laughs> Sorry about that, brethren. Sorry about that. <laughs> Saw a brother of mine just trying to get a hold of me. Brother, you see this? Okay? Leviticus chapter 20. Leviticus chapter 20, verses 1 under verse 5. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Again, thou shalt say to the children of Israel, Whosoever he be of the children of Israel, or of the sojourners that sojourn in Israel, strangers in Israel, not of Israel, that giveth any of his seed unto Molech, he shall surely be put to death. The people of the land shall stone him with stones. Have these parents who have received the steel of the Jesuit poniard and birthed that which we saw, have they given their children unto Moloch? The people of the land shall stone him with stones. And I will set my face against that man, and will cut him off from among his people, because he hath given of his seed unto Moloch, to defile my sanctuary, and to profane my holy name. And if the people of the land do any ways hide their eyes from the man, when he giveth of his seed unto Moloch, and kill him not, then I will set my face against that man, and against his family, and will cut him off, and all that go a-whoring after him, to commit whoredom, with with Moloch from among their people. Go to Ezekiel. Ezekiel chapter 16. Ezekiel chapter 16. We will be reading verses 15 on to verse 32 in Ezekiel chapter 16. Oh, Ezekiel. Okay. Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, then Ezekiel, okay? Okay? So start at the Proverbs or Psalms, turn your pages that way, okay? Ezekiel chapter 16, verses 15 on to verse 32. Pause it if you need to. You need to see this. But thou didst trust in thine own beauty, thinking yourself righteous. You trust in your own beauty, and playedest the harlot because of thy renown, and poredest out thy fornications on every one that passed by, as it was. Oh, and isn't Catholicism so beautiful to the eyes, huh? Yeah. And of thy garments thou didst take. And deckest thy high places with divers colors, and platest the harlot thereupon. The like thing shall not come, neither shall it be so. Thou hast also taken thy fair jewels of my gold, and of my silver, which I had given thee, and madest to thyself images of men, and didst commit whoredom with them. If you have breath today, you have breath because God gave it to you. If you have sustenance and substance, it's because God allowed you to have it. If you have a child, that is the fruit of the womb. That is his reward. 
What are you doing with the treasures that God gives you? What are you doing with what God gives you? Uh, he makes his sun, S-U-N, to shine on the evil and the good. He gives rain to the evil and the good. What are you doing with it? Are you committing an abomination with that which he gives you? That holds both sw that sway to uh, both us who are of the church of the living God and you lost people. You lost people, you're alive because the, the Lord allows it. What are you doing with what he has given you today? Huh? You're going to go sacrifice your children to Moloch, huh? You're going to set, your, uh, set wicked things before your eyes. Verse 18. And tookest thy broidered garments and coveredest them. And thou hast set mine oil and mine incense before them. See, God is a jealous God. He, whether you want to accept this or not, you atheistic fools, okay? Um, the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Um, God created you. You are his creation, whether you like that or not. Okay? And he has created you because he felt like it. Because of thy pleasure, they were and are, they were created. Okay? That's in Revelation chapter 3, I believe. Why God created you. He created you to have relationship with him. What are you doing with that? My meat also which I gave thee, fine flour and oil and honey, wherewith I fed thee. Thou hast even set it before them for a sweet savor, and thus it was, saith the Lord God. See, this was one of the things that the Lord rebuked me on when we were eating poorly, eating junk, Okay? I thought I was, you know, I'm saving money. I'm going to buy all this ramen and all this toxic food. Uh, uh, uh. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> you need to be mindful of the Lord's provision, people. Moreover, thou hast taken thy sons and thy daughters, whom thou hast borne unto me, and these hast thou sacrificed unto them to be devoured. Is this of thy whoredoms a small matter? All you sick scum. Yes, you sick scum who justify abortion. Moreover, thou hast taken thy sons and thy daughters whom thou hast borne unto me, and these hast thou sacrificed unto them to be devoured. Is this of thy whoredoms a small matter? Do you know that baby parts are in the steel of the Jesuit poniard? Do you even know that there are baby parts in your toxic soda pop oh I'm being conspiratorial huh oh yeah yeah uh, yeah hold it against me that I don't believe what the Catholic disease creators the CDC tells me <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah yeah or the FDA yeah 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 I trust the FDA People, you trust our government, you need to have your head examined. The one thing you can trust of our government, you want to know the one thing you can trust our government for? Is that they're doing evil continually and it's getting worse. Those of you who think that uh, when Smoking Joe finally goes away and Kamala Harris is officially set up, she's already the president, you think things are going to get better? Moreover, thou hast taken thy sons and thy daughters, verse 20, whom thou hast borne unto me, and these thou hast sacrificed unto them to be devoured. Is this of thy whoredom a small matter? That thou hast slain my children, 
and delivered them to cause them to pass through the fire for them. <laughs> Children are not a consequence or a um, or a curse, people. They're a blessing. I cannot have children. Those of you who can, you, you fathers out there who abandon your children. Look at me. You fathers out there. You abandon your children. You're scum. You're scum. Shame upon you. I don't like their mother. So what? Shouldn't have had a child with her anyway. Mother, vice versa. But still, that's not the child's fault. Hmm. Look at feminism today in America. Look at feminism on the, the on, in the, in, throughout the world. Okay? Look at it. Why is that? Where are the fathers? Playing video games. Where are the fathers? Watching football games. Watching Hollywood movies. Where are the fathers? If that offends you? You're a father who have abandoned your children? Good! Good! Especially when it comes to the raising of the children. You have abandoned your children? Shame on you. Shame on you fathers who walk out on your children when they need you. When they need you. Verse 22. And in all thine abominations and thy whoredoms thou hast not remembered the days of thy youth when thou wast naked and bare and wast polluted in thy blood. And it came to pass after all thy wickedness. Whoa. Woe unto thee, saith the Lord God, for all your wickedness, that thou hast also built unto thee an eminent place, and hast made thee an high place in every street. Thou hast built thy high place at every head of the way, and hast made thy beauty to be abhorred, and hast opened thy feet to every one that passed by, and multiplied thy whoredoms. Thou hast also committed fornication with the Egyptians, a type of the world those of the world, for our instruction and righteousness. Thy neighbors, great of flesh, and hast increased thy whoredoms to provoke me to anger. Behold, therefore, I have stretched out my hand over thee, and have diminished thine ordinary food. Famine is coming, and delivered thee unto the will of them that hate thee, the daughters of the Philistines, which are ashamed of thy lewd way. Think, put that in context with the, uh, with the Christians, okay? The Christians and you lost people who are lost because of the Christians, okay? The Philistines, which are ashamed of thy lewd way. The Philistines, who did not worship the true God of the scriptures, okay? You lost people, look at the Christians. It's like, <laughs> you don't look any different from me. You don't sound, talk any different. You don't think any different. You don't believe any different. Oh, you believe that the, the, the Jesus you told me about rose from the dead, and you say that's all I need? No changes come? Oh, oh, you, that's right. You tell me it's, it's optional. Brethren, is it any wonder why these lost people are the way they are towards us of the church of the living God and the scriptures? Why? Because of what the Christians have done. Because of what the Christians have done. Remember. Remember. Catholics are Christians. Thou hast played the whore also with the Assyrians. Because thou wast unsatiable. Couldn't be satisfied. Yea, thou hast played the harlot with them, and yet couldst not be satisfied. Scripture explaining itself. 
Thou hast moreover multiplied thy fornication in the land of Canaan unto Chaldea. And yet thou wast not satisfied herewith. How weak is thine heart, saith the Lord God, seeing thou doest all these things. The work of an imperious, whorish woman. And exactly. Wine and whoredom weaken the heart. Wearied in all your sins. Torn down. Beaten because of all your sins. Look at the love, some of the faces of the elderly who are lost. How weary they look. How tired they look. Wearied because of a life of sin. And the more you sin, the more you get used to it. The further you get away from God, the harder it is to come to God. Unless, of course, by a catastrophe. Brother of mine asked, you know, what do we do with all what's going on right now? The answer is simple. The fear of the Lord. How do you arrive at the fear of the Lord? I personally believe everybody should have an experience with death. See, because we have the church of the living God. We know. We know here in our heads. We even know here in our heart about when we die, we're going to go home to be with the Lord. We know it here and here. But when you actually stand before it, that's different. When you act, you know here in your mind and you know here in your heart. But when you come to the whoa, 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 this is really happening. Like I've said before, and I've never forgotten it. And I heard, I heard this when I was lost. I believe you want to get someone to believe in God. Put them on a sinking submarine. You want someone to truly fear the Lord? Take their little footsies to the edge of death. It shouldn't have to take that. But for those of you of the Church of the Living God, Praise the Lord if it does come to that. Because if you almost die, you know where you're going. Yes, you do. I'm talking to the saved. But experiencing it. And we see when there are other things to take into account. Those who have wives. Those who have children. Like I said, when I face death myself, right Right here, okay? Right here, right here, kneeling on my knees, praying to the Lord. Right here, when I faced death, okay? I knew where I was going to go because I'm saved. I know in my mind and in my heart, I know where I'm going. I know I'm saved. I know that. My fear was leaving my wife behind. That was my fear. That was my fear. My wife needs me. I can't leave my wife to this lost world. To her lost children. I can't. So, to arrive at a more perfect fear of the Lord. See, when the Lord saves you, you have the fear of the Lord. When he truly saves you, fear of the Lord has to be there. You know, fear of going to hell, fear of standing out before him, lost, knowing that there ain't nothing you can do. Okay, that's the fear of the Lord. And in the fear of the Lord, you will call upon the name of the Lord. That's why people who are against calling upon the name of the Lord, they truly do not fear the Lord. There's no fear of the Lord of them at all. Because why? They save themselves by their belief. And they fight against calling upon the name of the Lord. They're too full of themselves. Okay? 
But to get a more perfect fear of the Lord, I truly believe every one of us should experience death in some way. Because it reminds you. You know where you're going here and in your heart, yes. But it wakes you up. Woke me up. I got a wife. There are some of you out there who have a wife, who have a husband. You, la you ladies, you sisters. You have children. What's coming now? And see, sin weakens your heart, both literally and spiritually. Verse 31. In that thou buildest thine eminent place in the land of every way, and makest thine high place in every street, and hast not been as an harlot, in that thou scornest higher. But as a wife that committeth adultery, which taketh strangers instead of her husband, Let's read verse 33. They give gifts to all whores, but thou givest thy gifts to all thy lovers, and hirest them, that they may come unto thee on every side for thy whoredoms. Some striking warnings for us today right now, don't you think, people? Hmm? And of course now, go to Proverbs chapter 30. Proverbs chapter 30. Verses 11 under verse 17. Now see, we are seeing this already with the generation of kids being raised on their cell phones, being raised in front of the television, being raised on video games, being coddled, being pampered. But with what the video that we started uh, with looking at today, what if? Proverbs 30, verses 11, on to verse 17. There is a generation that curseth their father and doth not bless their mother. See, the father is the one who is supposed to instill the, um, the teaching, the discipline. The mother is the nourishment, the softness, the compassion. There is a generation that are pure in their own eyes, and yet not washed from their filthiness. This is prevalent today. But with children born with that deficiency of parents that were both inoculated with the steel of the Jesuit poignard? Huh? There is a generation, oh, how lofty are their eyes, and their eyelids are lifted up. Proud. That's talking about pride. Lifted up eyelids. There is a generation whose teeth are as swords and their jaw teeth as knives to devour the poor from off the earth and the needy from among men. Why? Because these children today, especially the whole world revolves around them. If you've ne never seen, gone to some kids um, sport games and watched like a baseball game or a volleyball game and seen the, the parents, how they're reacting and see some of the kids being ashamed of their parents. For the way they are acting? Isn't that interesting? Why Why is that? The horse leech hath two daughters crying, Give, give! Give, give! The whole world revolves around them. And that's a trait that is prevalent in those who are truly lost. They think everything revolves around them. You think about that. Think about that. Everything that someone says is about you. Everything that someone, anything that someone thinks is about you. Okay? You might not, the person might not even know you personally, but yet you think they're talking about you, right? Because it's all about you. The world revolves around you. When those of us who are of the church and living God saved, the world is in the hand of our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. He's got the whole world in his hand. Okay? They used to sing that in school. Like they used to do the Pledge of Allegiance. Not too busted up that they don't do the Pledge of Allegiance anymore, of course, but...
The horse leech hath two daughters, crying, Give, give. Gimme, give gimme, give it's all about me. There are three things that are never satisfied. Yea, four things say not it is enough. The grave and the barren womb, death and no fruit. The earth that is not filled with water, water, hydration, no living water. And the fire that saith not it is enough. The fires of hell will never cease. The eye that mocketh at his father and despiseth to obey his mother mocks at their father's discipline and teaching and despiseth to obey his mother to be compassionate, soft. See, a father and a mother, they fulfill two things that are necessary for the children. The father is supposed to be the one to guide the house. You know, as far as being the, the teacher, teaching the children, the mother is to be a keeper at home to guide the house, okay? Meaning, providing for things, teaching the children basic um, manners and stuff like that, while the father out there providing for his own. Teaching the scriptures to their children, being the discipline. You know? Brother of mine said when he was raising his son, that his uh, son said to him that... Um, his, uh, his father was really very strict on him that he went into the army. That army was a uh, cakewalk because of the way his father raised him. And he, even uh, our brother will say, it's like, I don't know if that's a compliment. It's like, I, I would take that way as one. Yeah. The eye that mocketh at his father and despiseth to obey his mother. The ravens of the valley. A raven was an unclean bird, by the way shall pick it out, and the young eagle shall eat it. Let's look at Isaiah chapter 5. Isaiah chapter 5. What's going on? What, what, is, what is the basis of all this? Hmm? Isaiah chapter 5. This is all the result of what? Man rejecting God. And you look at America, okay? You look at America. Beg your pardon, excuse me, okay? Look at America. How America has progressed. Has it gotten better or is it getting worse? And you've got these poor fools out there who think that make America great again when they bring Trump back onto the scene as it just with, did with Napoleon Bonaparte. You watch. I have a video on the uh, on the channel here called the Napoleon Plan. Okay, you watch. That's what the Jesuits are going to do with uh, Donald Trump. That's what they're going. You watch. That's what they're going to do with Donald Trump. He's going to be like Napoleon, who sacrificed his army at Waterloo. That's what they're going to do with Trump. You watch. You watch, tough guy. You watch. You watch. You watch. Isaiah chapter 5, verses 8, under verse 28. Woe unto them that join house to house, that lay field to field, till there be no place, that they may be placed alone in the midst of the earth. In mine ears, said the Lord of hosts, of a truth, many houses shall be desolate, even great and fair, without inhabitant, yea, Ten acres of vineyard shall yield one bath, and the seed of an homer shall yield an ephah. Woe unto them that rise up early in the morning, that they may follow strong drink, that continue until night, to wine and flame them. Whoever is drunken, whoever is taken in wine, is deceived thereby and not wise. Okay? And the harp and the vial and the tavern and pipe and wine are in their feasts, but they regard not the work of the Lord, neither consider the operation of his hands. See, you want to distract yourself with music, with wine, but yet with all this distraction, it's keeping your focus on the things that it ought not to be when your focus ought to be on the Lord Jesus Christ. See, that's what Satan does. 
He is an expert at distraction. Expert at it to make to to distract people from what he has called what the Lord has called them on to. And you lost people. Want to listen to your rock music and feast, eat, drink, and be merry because uh, tomorrow you will die. Hmm. Therefore, my people are gone into captivity because they have no knowledge, and their honorable men are famished. And their multitude dried up with thirst. Therefore hell hath enlarged herself. Look out your door. Look out your window. And I say this with charity. If you think things are getting better, you're an idiot. What is an idiot? An idiot is someone who is a uh, void of logic and in reason. If you think things are getting better, you're an idiot. I love you, but you're an idiot if you think things are getting better. Hell is enlarging. What does that say? Therefore, hell hath enlarged herself. Ooh. Does that have anything to do with the mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of all the earth? I wonder. Therefore hell hath opened herself and opened her mouth without measure and their glory and their multitude and their pomp and he that rejoiceth, rejoiceth shall descend into it. Hmm. Sure does sound like it could be tied into a reference to Revelation chapter 17 talking about Roman Catholicism. Sure does. And the mean man shall be brought down, and the mighty man shall be humbled, and the eyes of the lofty shall be humbled. But the Lord of hosts shall be exalted in judgment, and God that is holy shall be sanctified in righteousness. God is known by his judgment. That's why... It is not a sin or inaccurate to pray that God's judgment be upon the lost, that in God's judgment onto that lost man or woman might bring them to brokenness, contrition, and fear of the Lord, i.e. salvation. Then shall the lambs feed after their manner, and the waste places of the fat ones shall strangers eat, when God's judgment comes to pass. Woe unto them that draw iniquity with cords of vanity, and sin, as it were, with a cart rope. They say, that say, let him make speed, and hasten his work, that we may see it, and let the counsel of the Holy One of Israel draw nigh and come, that we may know it. While well, all the while, in sin, it's like, hey, we want to know the Lord's uh, word of the Lord, but yet, you're living in sin. A little double-minded, are you? And here is the condemnation of America. You lost people. Saying sodomy is okay. Abortion is okay. Pedophilia is okay. Here is the condemnation of my government here that's in America and yours too, especially if you're in Australia. Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter, calling evil good, abortion, sodomy. That put darkness for light and light for darkness. They don't want to see. They would rather be ignorant, willfully ignorant, not see, than rather having the light of scripture expose their sins and the truth unto them. And put bitter or sweet, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. In the end, the wages of sin is death. And in the end, dear friend, 
all that you're lusting after, it's going to leave the most rottenest, bitterest taste in your mouth. While the scriptures may cut you at first, but afterward, there ain't nothing sweeter on this earth than this word, than these scriptures there, boy. Because the Lord will speak to you through this. If you're saved. Woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight. And wisdom and prudence is equated unto what? The fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding. Job 28, 28, rules to live by. Woe unto them that are mighty to drink wine and men of strength to mingle strong drink. To divert yourself, to pollute your brains, getting drunk. Which justify the wicked for reward. And take away the righteousness of the righteous from him. Welcome to America 2021. And the presidency of Kamala Harris as given unto her by the Jesuit order. Don't. Smoking Joe, he's a front man. He's there to take the fall to lift up Kamala Harris. And whether he make it the full term or not, okay, look at what Smoking Joe has been allowed to do. You know, I, I personally believe um, that his, his frailty, his uh, look that he has, I believe that's an act. I really do. And you have seen videos where uh, Smoking Joe has received the steel of the Jesuit poniard. Yeah, right. You think he really got that? Or did he just get a saline solution? Hmm. Hmm. I don't think any one of the upper echelon of the government has gotten steel of the Jesuit poniard. And if they have, they've gotten something that's not going to kill them. How do, how do they know? How do we know that Smoking Joe actually got what is given, being given on to the people that are killing people and uh, making them cripple? How do we know? Wake up, people. Wake up. Therefore, as the fire devoureth the stubble, and the flame consumeth the chaff, so their root shall be as rottenness, and their blossom shall go up as dust, because they have cast away the law of the Lord of hosts and despised the word of the Holy One of Israel. There it is. They don't want to hear the word of the Lord. They don't want to know who the true Jesus is. They want the Jesus preached by the Christians. But even that, a lot of the lost don't want. Because they know it's fake deep down. Yes, you lost people who attack Christianity. Yes, you're right. Christianity is fake. But the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, as told you through the scriptures, that resides in the church of the living God, body of Christ that ain't why do you think they hate us so much why do you think there are countless droves of infiltrators out there wanting to be but they're not because you know them by their fruits therefore is the anger of the Lord kindled against this, his people and he has stretched forth his hand against them and has smitten them. And the hills did tremble. And their carcasses were torn in the midst of the streets. For all this his anger is not turned away. But his hand is stretched out still. And he will lift up. An ensign to the nations from far. And will hiss unto them. From the end of the earth. And behold. They shall come with speed swiftly. 
None shall be weary nor stumble among them. None shall slumber nor sleep. Neither shall the girdle of their loins be loosed. Neither the latchet of their shoes be broken. Whose arrows are sharp and all their bows bent. Their horses' hoofs shall be counted like flint. And the, their wheels like a whirlwind. Let's finish the chapter. Their roaring shall be like a lion. They shall roar like young lions. Yea, they shall roar and lay hold on the prey. And shall carry it away safe. And none shall deliver it. And in that day, they shall roar against them like the roaring of, us, of the sea. And if one look unto the land, behold, darkness and sorrow. And the light is darkened the heavens thereof. Why is all this? Verse 24. Therefore as the fire devoureth the stubble and the flame consumeth the chaff, so their root shall be as rottenness and their blossom shall go up as dust, because they have cast away the law of the Lord of hosts and despised the word of the Holy One of Israel. There you go. There you go. There you go. Leviticus chapter 26. This isn't all of God's judgment. This isn't God's wrath. God's wrath will be poured out on this earth for seven years during the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? But we're seeing little snippets of it. Okay? Why is this? Now, Leviticus chapter 26. you got to remember, this is specifically doctrinally warnings unto the Jewish people for rejecting their God okay and you look at the Holocaust uh, check the playlist uh, uh, that's about onto the Jewish people check that out if you're curious okay uh, the Holocaust was a judgment from our Lord because of his people's constant rejection of him okay but to instruct us of God's righteous judgment coming and his wrath that's coming. Leviticus chapter 26, verses 14 on to verse 28. But if ye will not hearken unto me, and will not do all these commandments, and if ye shall despise my statutes, or if your soul abhor my judgments, so that ye will not do all my commandments, but that ye break my covenant, Specifically, doctrinally, dispensationally, this is for the Jewish people, the Hebrew, okay? For a different dispensation. Instruction and in righteousness, this is for. A warning. This is for his own people, the apple of his eye, the Jew, the Hebrew. Better take heed, people. I also will do this unto you. I will even appoint over you terror. Consumption and the burning agi that shall consume the eye, that shall consume the eyes and cause sorrow of heart, and ye shall sow your seed in vain, for your enemy shall eat it. And isn't that happening right now today? Huh? Huh? Isn't that happening right now today? And I will set my face against you, and ye shall be slain before your enemies. They that hate you shall reign over you, and ye shall flee when none pursueth you. And if ye will not yet for all this hearken unto me, then I will punish you seven times more for your sins. This he is speaking about his own people, the apple of his eye. And we think we're going to get off scot-free, huh? And these Christians are telling you that. Oh, don't worry, God's not mad at you. God's not a God of judgment. God loves everybody. We don't know who the... That, see, that, that satanic trinity. The God of the Old Testament and the God of the New Testament. Okay? Two different gods. God the Father in the Old. God the Son in the New. And the Holy Ghost is the third of the satanic trinity. The three-person trinity. That's satanic. No, the God of the Old Testament is the God of the New. One God. Spirit, soul, and body. We're made in the image of God. We have a spirit, we have a soul, and we have a body. Okay? Let's continue. And I will break the pride of your power. And I will make your heaven as iron and your earth as brass. And your strength shall be spent in vain. For your land shall not yield her increase. Neither shall the trees of the land yield their fruits. 
And if ye walk contrary unto me, and will not hearken unto me, I will bring seven times more plagues upon you according to your sins. I will also send wild beasts among you, which shall rob you of your children, and destroy your cattle, and make you few in number, and your highways shall be desolate. And if you will not be reformed by me by these things, but will walk contrary unto me, then will I also walk contrary unto you, and will punish you yet seven times more, seven times for your sins. God is a God of judgment. It's only God's long suffering that has allowed you today, lost man, lost woman. Okay? And I will bring a sword upon you that shall avenge the quarrel of my covenant. And when ye are gathered together within your cities, I will send the pestilence among you. And ye shall be delivered into the hand of the enemy. And when I have broken the staff of your bread, famine, ten women shall bake your bread in one oven, and they shall be deliver you your bread again by weight, and ye shall eat and not be satisfied. And if ye will not for all this hearken unto me, but walk contrary unto me. Look at this. Then I will walk contrary unto you also in fury. And I, and I, even I, will chastise you seven times for your sins. Note in verse 24 it says punish. In verse 18 it says punish. In verse 28 it says chastise coupled with fury. Oh, you don't want to hear this, do you? You don't want to hear this, do you? See, because of what is going on today is bringing about God's wrath. And with the video that we saw today, with what they're doing to the children, Even so, come Lord Jesus. Deuteronomy chapter 18. Deuteronomy chapter 18. Verses 9 on to verse 14. When thou art come into the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, thou shalt not learn to do after the abominations of those nations. Not mingling yourselves with the lost world. There shall not be found among you any one that maketh his son or his daughter pass through the fire, or that useth divination, or an observer of times, or an enchanter, or a witch, or a charmer, or a consulter with familiar spirits, or a wizard, or a necromancer. Why? For all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord. And because of these abominations, the Lord thy God doth drive them out from before thee. That's why no one of the church of the living God can rightly do any of these things. Okay? Uh, sacrifice his daughter, unto, uh, put him to the fire. Abortion. Okay? We use a divination, horoscopes and stuff like that, or an observer of times, or an enchanter, or a witch. White magic, black magic, give me a break. No one of the church of the living God can be wrapped up in that. And if you do, oh, oh, God's going to, God's going to get on you. He might kill you, you know. Hand you over to Satan for the destruction of the flesh that the spirit may be saved. But see, God hates this stuff. Or a charmer. So charming. So sweet. <laughs> or a consulter with familiar spirits. Or a wizard like Harry Potter. Or a necromancer. Someone who communes with the dead. Again, 
For all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord. And because of these abominations, the Lord thy God dry, doth drive them out from before thee. Thou shalt be perfect with the Lord thy God. Your heart will be perfect with the Lord thy God. Not give yourself over to those things that he hates. For these nations which thou shalt possess, possess hearkened unto observers of times and unto diviners. But as for thee, the Lord thy God hath not suffered thee to do so. Isn't that something? Hmm? Isn't that something? Beg your pardon, brethren. Beg your pardon. You're seeing my personal stuff there. <laughs> okay. Now, Romans chapter 13. Romans chapter 13. See, people like to say, well, we're supposed to obey the government, right? And you have these Christians saying, uh, we're supposed to obey the government, okay? We looked at Isaiah chapter 5. Woe unto them who call evil good and good evil. We looked in Leviticus and Deuteronomy at some of those examples of what happens when nations do that which is evil in the sight of the Lord. Romans chapter 13, verses 1 on to verse 9. Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of God. The powers that are, the powers that be are, are ordained of God. Yes, God ordains rulers, either for blessing or for judgment. Kamala Harris, President Kamala Harris, has been put in power by the Jesuit order allowed of by God. Why? To bring judgment upon this nation. That that wicked witch of the West lady in Australia and the Australian government, okay, she has been put in place there also by the Jesuits. Why? To bring judgment upon that nation of Australia. Okay? So yes, God ordained God ordained Trump. Why? To bring judgment upon America. Okay? America is a nation against God. Has been for a long time. A long time. A long, long, long time. Okay? So the rulers that are set up today, chosen by the devil, yes, but allowed, ordained of God to fulfill his purpose of judgment. Verse 2. Whosoever therefore resists the power, resisteth the ordinance of God. And they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. Now these Christians, they'll talk about that. But a lot of them like to skip verse 3. Or if they read verse 3, they won't do anything about it. But they'll harp on verses 1 and 2. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. Have we not already looked at what is evil? Witchcraft, sorcery, wizards. Uh, by the way, pharmakeia is witchcraft. Pharmacy, pharmakeia, where we derive our term pharmacy, is sorcery, witchcraft, druggists. Pharmakeia, pharmaceutical drugs are poison, witchcraft. In the scripture, pharmakeia is translated, what is it? Witchcraft and or sorcery. Come on, people. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. Wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. What is good? There is none good but one. That is God. To align and live your life according to the scripture, that is good. To stand for the principles, the truth, and the doctrine of scripture for today in this dispensation, that is what is good. Our government, your government, is against the scriptures, is against God. So the government is against what is good. Whoa, Smoking Joe talks about God. The God he's referring to is Lucifer, little G, the, the God of this world. 
little G, not the big G God, whom I serve, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. This government is a terror to good works and will be until the catching away and the destruction of this nation. Verse 4. Uh, let's read verse 3 again. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. Wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. For he is the minister of God to thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid. For he beareth not the sword in vain. For he is the minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. Hence, that's why Kamala Harris is in power. Oh, not openly yet, but you watch. Okay? That's why that weird woman in Australia has power. Why? To execute vengeance, judgment upon that nation. Okay? Well, beg your pardon, brother. Beg your pardon. Okay? Let's continue. Wherefore ye must needs be subject, not only for wrath, but also for conscience sake. For this cause pay ye tribute also, pay taxes. For they are God's ministers, attending continually upon this very thing. Render therefore to all their dues, tribute to whom tribute is due, custom to whom custom, fear to whom fear, honor to whom honor. Owe no man anything, but to love one another. For he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. For this, here are our commandments today. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not steal. Here's, one, here's something that's not in the Bibles. Thou shalt not bear false witness. That's not in your NIV or in your ESV or in your New American Standard, is it? Why? Could it be because they're um, um, bearing false witness? Thou shalt not covet, and if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying. Namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Also got a video on that, dealing with, it's the Christian thing to do. Yeah. But this government, and all governments, are an ER terror to good works. Why? Because the people are doing exactly what we looked at. Let's go back there to uh, Deuteronomy chapter 18. Okay? Our government, our governments are doing exactly what is in Deuteronomy chapter 18. What is that? Verses 10 on to verse 12. Okay? There shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire. Pass through the fire. Abortion. Or that useth divination. Or an observer of times. Or an enchanter or a witch. Or a charmer. Or a consulter with familiar spirits. Or a wizard. Or a necromancer. For all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord. And because of these abominations... The Lord thy God doth drive them out from before thee. And because of those things, God destroyed those nations before the children of Israel. Had them kill everything. Man, woman, and children. Why? To eradicate all sin. Because those children that would be born would continue that evil. Think about that. Roll that around in your head a little bit. What these Jesuits have done to these children born of parents who have received the steel of the Jesuit poniard, may God's righteous judgment be upon them. And if one of those judge, uh, Jesuits can come to brokenness and repentance, you know, brokenness, repentance, contrition, fear of the Lord, and become the next Alberto Rivera, great. But if not, his will be done.
Proverbs chapter 11. Oh, oh, wait, wait, I'm skipping. Uh, 1 Pete chapter 2. 1 Pete chapter 2. Verses 13 on to verse 17. Peter is saying the same thing, basically. Submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, whether it be to the king as supreme, or unto governors as unto them that are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers and for the praise of them that do well. This government here in America, in Australia, they are a terror to good works. Okay? For so is the will of God that with well-doing ye may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. Ignorance, not knowing better. Foolish. The fool has said in his heart there is no God. Okay? As free, and not using your liberty as a cloak of maliciousness, but as the servants of God. Honor all men, love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the king. So, they are there as a terror to evil works, not to good works. But when you have a government like here in America that is a terror to good works, it is an anti-Christ government. And until the catching away of the Church of the Living God, the body of Christ, or until this nation be destroyed, there is no turning back for America. You you can get saved. This can't. Leviticus 19. One verse. Leviticus 19. Just one verse. Leviticus 19. Because see, our government falsifies, has dishonest practices. Our government, especially when it comes to business, what is it? No jab, no job now? It's almost there, people. Verse 36. Just balances, just weights, a just effa, and a just hen shall ye have. I am the Lord your God, which brought you out of the land of Egypt. Proverbs chapter 11. Proverbs chapter 11. See, our government does not have a just weight, a just bath, a just effa. It doesn't have anything like that. It's slighted to line the pockets of the upper class. The middle class is what they want to destroy and make everybody poor. They want to bring in communism. That's what the United Nations, uh, what is that, sustainable living or something like that? I'm going to be doing a video on that here sooner or later. Uh, thank you, sister, for um, bringing that to my attention. But they want to bring in communism, okay? Make everyone equal. You might, you might say, what's wrong with that? Um, there are some when it comes to business that are not equal than, to, than others. Everybody ought to have a right, a God-given right, to um, seek provision. But, you know, when it comes to things of culture and stuff like that, okay, there are those who work harder than others. Okay? Proverbs chapter 11, verses 1 under verse 6. And this, this is what our government does here in America. A false balance is abomination to the Lord, but a just weight is his delight. When pride cometh, then cometh shame, but with the lowly is wisdom. Wisdom is equated to the fear of the Lord. And by pride comes false balances. Because pride is all about me, which bleeds into covetousness. You need that money. The integrity of the upright shall guide them, but the perverseness of transgressor, transgressors shall destroy them. Riches profit not in the day of wrath, but righteousness delivereth from death. The righteousness of the perfect shall direct his way, 
but the wicked shall fall by his own wickedness. The righteous shall be the righteousness of the upright shall deliver them, but transgressors shall be taken in their own naughtiness. Tie that in with false balances. Hence America. The land of the greedy and the home of the enslaved. America. Well, Brad, it sounds like you don't like America. <laughs> don't worry. I'll be, I'll be leaving sooner or later. I'll be leaving sooner or later. See, America has gone past the point of no return. Trump is not going to bring in a revival. There is no revival left. Never was. The only hope is for you, individual, to get saved of our Lord Jesus Christ. Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 16, verses 5 on to verse 13. Thank you, partner. Everyone that is proud in heart is an abomination to the Lord. Though hand join in hand, he shall not be unpunished. By mercy and truth, iniquity is purged. And by the fear of the Lord, men depart from evil. It's called understanding. Okay? When a man's ways please the Lord, he maketh even his enemies to be at peace with him. Why is that? Because the enemies know that they can't prosper over him because the Lord is with him. Better is a little with righteousness than great revenues without right. A man's heart deviseth his way, but the Lord directeth his steps. You might come up to, with something in your heart, the heart is deceitful and desperately wicked. Who doth know it? Okay? I the Lord. That's Jeremiah chapter 17, verses 9 and 10. Look it up. Or 9 on to verse 11, excuse me. A divine sentence is in the lips of the king. His mouth transgresseth not in judgment. And verse 10, talking, uh, tie that into our Lord Jesus Christ as king of the Jews. When he speaks, he speaks right, pure, true, just judgment. Verse 11. A just weight and balance are Lord's. All the weights of the bag are his work. Fair business. Fair trade. Not the business that's being done here in America. It is an abomination to kings to commit wickedness. For the throne is established by righteousness. Righteous lips are the delight of kings, and they that and they love him that speaketh right. Do you speak right? Or do you want to itch people's ears? Hmm? Now let's go to the Psalms, shall we? Let's go to the Psalms. Psalm 5. We're almost done. We're almost done. Psalm 5. Give ear to my words, O Lord. Consider my meditation. Hearken unto the voice of my cry, my King and my God. For unto thee will I pray. My voice shalt thou hear in the morning, O Lord. And in the morning will I direct my prayer unto thee. And will look up. This is good evidence unto you that when you first wake up, you know, roll out of bed. Hi. Pray. Pray. First thing you do, get out of bed, pray. Good advice. For thou art not a God that hath pleasure in wickedness, unlike what the Christians tell you. Neither shall evil dwell with thee. The foolish, the fool has said in his heart, there is no God, shall not stand in thy sight. Thou hatest all workers of iniquity. Thou shalt destroy them that speak leasing. The Lord will abhor the bloody and deceitful man. Remember, our Lord said himself, Jacob have I loved, and Esau I have hated. See, 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 friends, listen to me. The, 
Christians tell you that God loves everybody, that God's love is unconditional. No, he loved Jacob and hated Esau. It does not say he hated his sin, that he hated Esau. If you reject the Lord Jesus Christ in the gospel, guess what? God's wrath is for you. Guess what? God hates you. Oh! But see, you, you, you think about it, you lost people, okay? You're all big on your logic, right? You hear these Christians telling you God loves you, but yet a loving God is going to send me to hell? That's because God loved, past tense, and gave, past tense. And his love is at Calvary, the cross. You go to him on his terms, then his love is for you. You go up another way with your belief. You're a thief and a robber. God's wrath is against you. That's why what the Christians tell you don't make sense to you. Because it's a lie. God is just. God is righteous. And if you don't come to him on his terms, by way of the cross, brokenness, contrition, fear of the Lord, but you go up another way, you're not saved. These easy believers and devils, just believe that none of them are saved. They're lost. They're thieves and robbers. And see, you lost people. You, you get that. And rightfully so. You want nothing to do with Christianity. People, this ain't Christianity. This ain't Christian. This is a Jewish book, by the way. But this isn't Christianity. This is the faith that was handed down to the saints. The church of God, the church of the living God. Okay? Verse 7. But as for me, I will come into thy house in the multitude of thy mercy, and in thy fear will I worship toward thy holy temple. Lead me, O Lord, in thy righteousness because of mine enemies. Make thy way straight before my face. For there is no faithfulness in their mouth. Their inward part is very wickedness. Their throat is an open sepulcher. They flatter with their tongue. Destroy thou them, O God. Let them fall by their own counsels. Cast them out in the multitude of their transgressions. For they have rebelled against thee. But let all those that put their trust in thee rejoice. Let them ever shout for joy, because thou defendest them. Let them also that love thy name be joyful in thee. And at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess. Jesus is Lord. Yeah. But let all those that put their trust in thee rejoice. Let them ever shout for joy, because thou defendest them. Let them also that love thy name be joyful in thee. For thou, Lord, wilt bless the righteous with favor, wilt thou compass him as with a shield. Hold your place. Uh, go to Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2. Come on, fingers, work with me. Philippians chapter 2, verses 9 on to verse 11. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus Christ, at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow, of things in heaven and things in earth, and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Jesus Christ is Lord. There's only one name, only one name given among men by where we must be saved, okay? Now go to Psalm number 7, Psalm 7. Psalm 7. O Lord my God, in thee do I put my trust. Save me from all them that persecute me and deliver me. 
lest he tear my soul like a lion, rending it in pieces, while there is none to deliver. O Lord my God, if I have done this, if there be iniquity in my hands, if I have rewarded evil unto him that was at peace with me, yea, I have delivered him that was without cause, I have delivered him that without cause is mine enemy. Let the enemy persecute my let the enemy persecute my soul and take it. Yea, let him tread down my life upon the earth and lay mine honor in the dust. Selah. Arise, O Lord, in thine anger. Lift up thyself because of the rage of mine enemies, and awake for me to judge to the judgment that thou hast commanded. So shall the congregation of the people compass thee about. For their sakes, therefore, return thou on high. The Lord shall judge the people. Judge me, O Lord, according to thy, according to my righteousness, and according to mine integrity that is in me. O let the wickedness of the wicked come to an end, but establish the just. For the righteous God trieth the hearts and reigns. My defense is of God, which saveth the upright in heart. God judgeth the righteous, and God is angry with the wicked every day. But see, you got the Christians telling you, God's not angry at you. God's not going to judge you. No, God is angry at the wicked every day. If he turn not, he will wet his sword. He hath bent his bow and made it ready. He hath also prepared for him the instruments of death. He ordaineth his arrows against the persecutors. Behold, he travaileth with iniquity, and hath conceived mischief, and brought forth falsehood. He made a pit, and digged, and digged it, and is fallen into the ditch which he made. His mischief shall return upon his own head, and his violent dealing shall come down upon his own pate. I will praise the Lord according to his righteousness, and will sing praise to the name of the Lord Most High. Alleluia. Alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Now, Psalm 9, verses 15 on to verse 20. The heathen are sunk down in the pit that they made. In the net which they hid is their own foot taken. The Lord is known by the judgment which he executed. The wicked is snared in the work of his own hands, Higiaon, Silah. The wicked shall be turned into hell, and all the nations that forget God. For the needy shall not always be forgotten. The expectation, the expectation of the poor shall not perish forever. Arise, O Lord, let not man prevail. Let the heathen be judged in thy sight. Put them in fear, O Lord, that nations may know themselves to be but men. Shilah. And what was the lie of Satan? Unto Eve in the Garden of Eden. Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. With eugenics, designer babies, and these poor children being born as a result of parents receiving the steel of the Jesuit Punyard. Put them in fear, O Lord, that nations may know themselves to be but men. Selah. But now, let's read Psalm 9, verses 1, under verse 14. I will praise thee, O Lord, with my whole heart. I will shew forth all thy marvelous works. I will be glad and rejoice in thee. I will sing praise to thy name, O thou Most High. When mine enemies are turned back, they shall fall and perish at thy presence. For thou hast maintained my right and my cause. Thou sattest in the throne judging right. Thou hast rebuked the heathen, the heathen that we already looked at. Thou hast destroyed the wicked. Thou hast put out their name forever and ever. That's coming. O oh, thou enemy, destructions are come to a perpetual end. And thou hast destroyed cities. Their memorial is perished with them. But the Lord shall endure forever. He hath prepared his throne for judgment. 
He has prepared his throne for judgment. And he shall judge the world in righteousness. He shall minister judgment to the people in uprightness. The Lord also will be a refuge for the oppressed, a refuge in times of trouble. And they that know thy name will put their trust in thee. For thou, Lord, hast not forsaken them that seek thee. Sing praises to the Lord which dwelleth in Zion. Declare among the people his doings. See, verse nine, uh, uh, excuse me, Psalm 9 thus far is talking about when our Lord Jesus Christ is going to be ruling and reigning in Jerusalem for the kingdom of heaven, the thousand year reign of our Lord Jesus Christ, the kingdom of heaven. He will be sitting as judge, as king, as lawgiver on the throne in Jerusalem. That's what this is talking about, okay? Sing praises to the Lord, verse 11, which dwelleth in Zion. Declare among the people his doings. When he maketh inquisition for blood, like he will in the kingdom of heaven, he remembereth them. He forgetteth not the cry of the humble. Have mercy upon me, O Lord. Consider my trouble which I suffer of them that hate me. Thou that liftest me up from the gate of death. Gates of death. Okay? We have been lifted up from the gates of death. You and I of the church of the living God. Remember 1 Corinthians chapter, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verses 17 on to verse 21. We who are, who are saved, we are ambassadors for Christ, having the ministry of reconciliation and the word of reconciliation. Okay? Verse 14. That I may shew forth all thy praise in the gates of the daughter of Zion. I will rejoice in thy salvation. Are you showing forth his praise, church of the living God? How he saved you? And finally, finally, Psalm 28. And we will end it on this. Your only hope, dear friend, is to get saved. Your salvation is not going to come from the world. And with what is coming, without the Lord Jesus Christ, it's hopeless. Unto thee will I cry, O Lord, my rock. Be not silent to me, lest if thou be silent to me, I become like them that go down into the pit. Hear the voice of my supplications when I cry unto thee, when I lift up my hands toward thy holy oracle. Please, Lord, have mercy upon me, a sinner who is chief. Draw me not away with the wicked and with the workers of iniquity, which speak peace to their neighbors, but mischief is in their hearts. Yeah. Give them according to their deeds. And according to the wickedness of the, their endeavors, give them after the work of their own, of their hands. Render to them their deserts. Again, your righteous judgment be upon them. If these people have done evil, may evil be their reward. If these people have done that which is good and right according to the scriptures, may they have their reward. God is a God of judgment. Whether that be good or whether that be evil. And as you have done, trust me, you will reap what you sow. Because they regard not the works of the Lord, nor the operation of his hands. He shall destroy them and not build them up. Blessed be the Lord, because he hath heard the voice of my supplications. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusted in him and I am helped. Therefore my heart greatly rejoiceth, and with my song will I praise him. The Lord is their strength, and he is their, the saving strength of his anointed. Save thy people, and bless thine inheritance. Feed them also, and lift them up forever. Amen. Amen. Your only hope, dear friend, is to get saved.
That's all there. That's the only hope you have. And you know what? I don't blame you for having problems with Christianity. I got problems with Christianity because what is Christian today is not according to the scripture. Okay? What the Jesuit order has allowed, has done, and these children. God's judgment is coming. What's it going to be for you? Are you going to be left behind because you just believe? Or are you going to be redeemed when you hear come up hither? Because you were broken and contrite and had fear of the Lord and called upon his name. Which one is it going to be? Time's running out, dear friend. How longer, how long we got to go till you and I, Church of the Living God, are out of here? I don't know. I don't think we got 10 years. And with children being born like that, Well, it's going to be it for this video. Thank you, brethren, sisters, Church of the Living God. Please consider these things that we have talked about today. You lost people. Please consider. Because those who are going to be warning you of things to come are getting fewer and fewer and fewer. But no, those that are coming, they just love you as you're running toward the cliff and they're not going to judge you. No, because God is all love, not angry. And you look at those children and you tell me. Thank you so much for watching. If you do, we love you. I'll see you in the next video.